Welcome to the Toronto International Film Festival. I'm Tom Powers, the documentary programmer. I'm really pleased to be here with the directors of Julia, Julie Cohen, and Betsy West, uh, joining us from New York. Um, Julie and Betsy, you previously worked together on RBG, and you've got another film coming out this year called My Name is Pauly Murray, about the another activist lawyer. So how did Julia Child come up as, uh, as a, someone for you to focus on? You know, we love telling unexpected stories of extraordinary women who have changed America, and Julia Child just fits that bill. She changed the way that Americans think about cooking, the way Americans think about food, the way Americans think about television, and even the way Americans think about women. So, uh, you know, cooking and baking is may, may seem like a small thing, but actually like the moving our, us to taking delight in, in, in food and preparing it seemed pretty big to us. What, so you're both New Yorkers, uh, which is a place that's no more for people who eat out in restaurants and spend time in their own kitchen. Uh, you know, I'm interested in your uh, the relationships to the kitchen that you were bringing to this project. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, my relationship came from growing up in a time when before Julia and uh, experiencing you know, mushroom casserole soup and <laughs> jello salads with weird things in it and <laughs> TV dinners. Uh, you know, I, I, I lived in New England as a kid and I remember when Julia came on television and people were mesmerized by this person and also began to really expand and experiment <laughs> with uh, cooking better food. And I noticed the change in my household. And, um, you know, I, uh, I, I like, I love to cook both my, you know, my mother wasn't so much into cooking. It's odd that my sister and I both in the 1970s and 80s, when we were establishing homes, we really got into cooking. And I think uh, a lot of that is due to Julia and the influence that, that Julia had on our world. Um, so in the film credits, we, credits we're, we're, we see that you're drawing on the work of other biographers, um, but making a film is a different project than uh, writing a book. And you, one of the things you have to do is choose where to focus for, for, for 90 minutes. Can you talk about you know, how you decided where you wanted to put your emphasis in, in her story? Yeah, we wanted to tell a story that was kind of the arc of a per of this woman's life, but with a sort of a particular emphasis on the fact that this is a person who really broke some constraints of what might have been expected of a woman of her generation, who actually for a while was flitting around in her own words, not really sure who and what she wanted to be. You know, being uh, an ambitious, intelligent woman in the era, you know, Julia Child was born in 1912, being an ambitious, intelligent woman at that time, it was not like the world was your oyster. Um, so it took Julia a while. And I think we really wanted to lean into the fact that she didn't find her passion and her fame until relatively late in life and to hone in on the, jo the joy of the food itself and on the love story. Uh, well, I want to ask more about the love story because for people who mainly know Julia as a eccentric TV personality, and you know these days may only know her from clips, if uh, if you're not old enough to have ever watched her her shows, um, you know we might not know anything about the the sensual side of her marriage, and and we also often don't get insight into the intimate lives of, of people from her generation. So, can you talk more about you know what you were trying to bring out there? Yeah. Um we had the opportunity through Julia's archive, letters, diaries, and the photographs that Julia's husband Paul took to really, I think, bring to life this love story. I mean, it was transformative for Julia to meet Paul Child. They were both in the Far East working, you know, for World War II, uh, 
Paul was a graphic designer uh, doing maps and other things for the military. And Julia was working for the OSS. They were both in kind of the spy business uh, in World War II. Paul was uh, 10 years older and a much more well-read, sophisticated guy who just opened the world to Julia and opened the world of food. First in China, which I think a lot of people don't know, they loved eating this. They were posted in China and they loved eating that food. And after they got married, after the war, and Paul uh, was working for the State Department in France, uh, that's where Julia found her passion. And Paul really supported this. He loved having a wife who was just getting so much joy out of discovering how to become a good cook. Enrolled in the Cordon Bleu, uh, one of the only women in a class of a bunch of uh, American GIs who were there studying after World War II. And um, at every step of the way, Paul, Paul was supporting Julia. And we were able through this material, I think, to, to really bring that love story to life. Um, you mentioned the archives, and I, I wonder if you can talk more about you know the material that you were uh, drawing upon. Uh, for, it's unclear to me how much Julia Child's specific archives are its own entity, or if you or if you're pulling from many different sources. Well, there were many different sources, but Julia Child does have an extensive archive at the Schlesinger Library at Harvard. Um, which with the great permission of the Julia Child Foundation, we used extensively. I will say that our genius editor on this project, Carla Gutierrez, said to us as she was starting to put together, I have never had a project where I have felt like I have too much material to work with. Like there were, you know, because Paul was such a fantastic photographer and had taken all of these really loving, intimate photos of Julia. There's kind of this really personal feel to the archives as well as the more formal moments. I mean, you know, Julia was a celebrity uh, in the, you know, for several decades in the end of her life and was photographed, you know, to a fairly well. So there's just this like spectacular material that we wanted, you know, that we felt immersed in and that we wanted the viewer just to feel like they were like pulled into this world. And then there is, a, you know, like the, the great footage of Paris, for instance, in the 40s and 50s that obviously came from separate archives and pulling that all together as, you know, as Carla did so beautifully in that scene where you're seeing this, you know, sumptuous archival Paris. I mean, I'll say that when Betsy and I watched the final color corrected version of that on a big screen, we were like, oh, let's like, we wanted to leave this we wanted to leave the post session and just go to Paris. Like it's like there's something there's something so so beautiful about that kind of archive when you haven't seen Paris in the 50s for a few decades, you know, just to pull you right in. Yeah. And then sort of moving forward, we really wanted to place Julia in the context of the time, you know, the time when 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 I grew up and when uh the food was <laughs> really not so good and you know what television was like so we had a we had a lot of fun with the archive of the early days of public television with the pointy headed professors who were coming on and doing these lectures and you know julia just upended that uh so that that was a lot of fun as well as uh, the archive of all the kind of pert and pretty young women who were featured on television as opposed to, you know, the very forthright and direct and kind of surprising Julia who just struck a nerve with the American public. Uh, you know, television executives didn't get it, but, uh, you know, when the public responded, they said, oh, gee, maybe we should do a TV show with this woman because people seem to really like her. And we think that was a huge turning point uh, in, in television. Well, I want to ask more about that because I, I think that is a theme that becomes prominent uh, in this film. And, and you know, maybe the two of you who have worked in uh, different aspects of television documentary over uh, many years are, are especially drawn to it. And, and I certainly appreciate it because I'm drawn to that history. Um, 
you know, can you talk more about how you were, you know, really looking at the way Julia Child's career was interwoven with the with the development of, of public television? Absolutely. You know, Betsy and I both have experience in network television, in public television, and in the doc world. And we know that there's this, uh, like, myth, I would say, among executives that viewers only, like, viewers only want to see young, beautiful women. Like, you see, even in, in the film, even when they're trying to sell refrigerators, they get, like, this gorgeous lady, you know, with a tiny little waist in a pink dress, like, dancing among the refrigerators. Like, has any woman in the history of mankind ever actually done that you know but the belief is like that's that's all that a viewer that that's all anyone wants to see of, of a woman of a woman and you know in this case as in as in real life like the, the the viewers just proved them wrong julia by happenstance ended up as a guest on a television show about books and all and viewers are responding male and female saying like, who is this real person? I want I want to see more people like this on television. I don't care that she's not the most petite, you know, demure, gorgeous, supermodel, quiet, tiny lady in the world. She seems, she seems fascinating. She seems like she knows what she's talking about and she seems like she's for real. And I think to me and Betsy, like the thought of viewers responding to that over the sort of leaping over what yeah. the executives think is kind of like a moving and beautiful part of the story. Yeah, and let's face it, I mean, she was 50 years old at this point, which is also kind of inspiring uh, for us. I mean, the fact that Julia had this authenticity, she was who she was and, and uh, people just responded to that. They really appreciated uh, her personality. And I, and I do think it changed the way uh, television began to think about who could be on TV. Uh, you know, anyone who's uh, watched a little or a lot of Julia Child will have their kind of favorite uh, moments or lines. And there's some that have become famous in the culture, uh, like the, the, the one that uh, Dan Aykroyd on Saturday Night Live um, is, uh, is, is spoofing. Um, I wonder what it was like as your team dug through the archives to you know, find those kind of choice Julia moments to, uh, to bring out. Yeah, well, we, we all watched quite a lot. I, I believe, you know, between us our archival producers, APs, Carla, the editor, I think we watched every single episode that Julia Child ever did on television. So one thing was, was watching moments and picking out great ones. Another thing was that the archival producers at our direction created a spreadsheet where we divided Julia moments into categories. One thing was by food, like, is it fish or is it beef? But another thing was like, failure like there's a big yeah. theme in the, you know that people people that remember julia as we do one of the things that we love about her is that she's like hey sometimes you screw up and like that's fine and so with the moments of failure moments of funny moments of you know a little raunchiness like and then that sort of helped guide the putting together um of uh the julia moments that we all remember and uh, quite a few that we weren't aware of and didn't remember um, you're really making an effort to cover Julia's life from a French perspective as well as as American perspective, and you're paying tribute to her original collaborators, especially Simca Beck. Um, can you talk about you know covering that side of the story, which you know I, I imagine was might have taken more of an effort uh, for you than to, to cover the American side of the story. Oh, Tom, it was such an effort to go to France and to film there. I can't tell, thank you for recognizing what a sacrifice that we made. Our suffering. <laughs> the suffering to go to France and do it. You know, we went to France in October of 2019, of course, having no idea what the following year uh, was going to, how it was going to play out. So it was, so the timing was so lucky for us that we were able to film, uh, you know, the locations in France and also the amazing interviews in France. I think um, that, that was the revelation for us of how, just fantastic. Our, our producer had found, Holly Siegel had tracked down some 
great people to interview uh, who had a connection to Julia, including the wonderful Danielle Delpouche, who uh, is a chef and was uh, Francois Mitterrand's personal chef, the first woman to be the chef of a French head of state. And her interview to me just enlivens the whole film and brings to light the, you know, no, the sexism. Uh, certainly there's sexism in American kitchens, but that's nothing to the sexism in French kitchens where it was a man's world and a man's world that Danielle broke open and that, that Julia did as well. That was so much fun to do. So yes, we had a very tough time in uh, France. We suffered through for, a, I don't know how long we were there, you know, a little over a week. And it was, it was pretty wonderful. Um, uh, you're, uh, well, what did I want to say that uh, just went on my head? Well, you know, you mentioned the, uh, the pandemic and, when you began this project, uh, you couldn't have been thinking about it through that lens. But you know, now in the last year and a half, many of us have uh, yeah. spent a lot more time in our, our kitchen than we ever uh, have before. And um, you know, and I wonder, um, you know, wh what it's been like to you know be living inside the world of Julia Child and, and the world of teaching people, um, you know, how to enjoy themselves more in the kitchen against this backdrop. Yeah, I mean, I think it, the Julia story was a real joy for us during this painful, difficult time, like most of the edit of this film and a little bit of the final uh, shooting actually happened um, during COVID. And like everyone, you know, in the States and other places, like food and cooking and the, the care of preparing it and the fun of eating it like sort of took on a whole new importance um during covid and i think that we certainly felt that as we were putting together those scenes with the food we had always envisioned them as feeling a bit like dream sequences um in the when we first mentioned that to um one, one of our colleagues on this at, at Imagine, Justin Wilkes, he he started saying the term dream ballet, which I'm not quite sure what that means, but we loved it. Like, and, 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 that, and that was really like a, a guiding principle to want to, and like, just like the dreaminess and the love of food as a way to escape some of the less pleasant elements of reality um, felt like it hit a, a little harder during the COVID era. Yeah, and we, um worked with our fantastic cinematographer, Claudia Rashke, here in a Julia Child uh, kitchen that we built in a studio in Manhattan, uh, you know, complete with all of the copper pots laid out as Paul had planned them for Julia in her Cambridge kitchen and, you know, the garland stove that our producer sourced from a garage somewhere in New Jersey and then had renovated. And the filming of the food, we prepared the classic, some of the classic Julia dishes and tried to, you know, film them in as sumptuous a way as possible, which was really enhanced by our French cinematographer who was filming food with a macro camera almost in a way that you, you know, you can't even tell what is that? Is, is that a mushroom or is, you know, is that a mountain or a mushroom or what is it? So we, we wanted very much to enhance that, the emotional feeling of just seeing a wonderful dish uh, as it's prepared and as you're getting ready to eat it and, and to recreate that experience. Well, I'm uh, sure everyone who's just watched this film and has now listened to this interview is uh, eager to go eat something delicious. Yes, uh, yes please uh, go eat. Themselves. So uh, I'm so grateful to you both for joining us. And we're so pleased to be uh, showing the international premiere of Julia. Julie Cohen and Betsy West, thank you very much. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Tom.